Hello and welcome. I'm Andy, and this is a procedure video for the um, X Plane 11, Columbia 400, or Cessna 400, depending on what you want to call it. Um, so, either the Columbia or the Covalis. Mm. But first, a disclaimer I'm not a pilot, I'm not a certified flight instructor. Uh, this is just for flight simming, this is just for fun. Don't use this real aviation training in, in, a, in, a, in a way this is not real so just don't use it if you want to do something with real aviation you should take the proper training and do the tr proper courses and take proper actions with the proper certified in flight instructors so without uh, well, with that out of the way <coughs> um, I'm just an aviation enthusiast and flight simming enthusiast so um, so links to this plane, which is the G1000 version, um, will be in the description. Link to this airport, which is um, which is uh, West Point, is also in the description. It's a very cool airport. I have auto scenery, it's all included in everything. It's very cool. In case you want to try it out. Uh, so uh, anyway, go go. That's in the links in the description if you want to try that. Um, um, what else? Um, also, the links are something you will need to follow me in this this series of videos. It's the um, uh, pilot operating handbook, which is also there. It's the G1000 with this version. It's for the Cessna 400, and the Cessna 400 started out life as the Columbia 400. Uh, Columbia was an air aircraft manufacturing, I mean American aircraft manufacturing pl uh, company that went defunct in 2007. was then bought up by Cessna, so the suddenly overnight the f Columbia 400 went in what got to be the Cessna 400 uh, Cervales. It's now turning into the TTR, TTX, I think it's called Cessna TTX, but um, it's a l slightly more developed version of this uh, of the 400 with a G2000 cockpit. This has the G1000, so if we go in here, this is the G1000. Turn it on. Uh, show you everything. Get it going. No. So the G1000 cockpit. This is so you need uh, explain 1.1 1 .1 at least 11.1 if you want to use this because that's the version that has the uh, the G1000 cockpit. So this is the default one. It works pretty nicely. So this series will be divided into several parts. Uh, I will start out with. Um, general information about the plane. This is the first episode and then we'll move on to an episode with uh, limitations and then we'll go to emergency procedures which mostly of those will be just me reading and then uh, we'll go to normal procedures which will be a flight and we'll talk a little bit about performance and maybe a little bit about weight and balance also. Um, so, But if we first start with general stuff this is a really cool Simulation. Um, you can open the doors and can open the cargo door. The cargo door is linked to the passenger door, so if you open that, that, that part will also open. But first, you bring out your pilot operating handbook and we'll go through the general sections. So, um, the pilot operating handbook is divided in into sections. Just like this. So, <coughs> <coughs> if you move to twenty page twenty one, that's the general section. And then, if you move to the next page, just a three D drawing. So, it tells you all the information about the plane. Uh, empty weight eleven hundred thirty four kilos. I'm from Europe, so I'll do kilos. Oh, it says pounds. Um, wingspan ten point nine meters. Length seven point six eight meters. Um, Gross weight sixteen thirty three kilos. 
later when called to limitation we'll know that landing leg weight max landing weight is 1551 so good to remember stall speed small stall speed i'll do knots indicated is 59 knots indicated the maneuvering speed is 158 knots indicated cruising speed 188 181 never exceed speed 230 and then there is a 310 horsepower continental TSEIO 5550C. Propeller is a three bladed heart cell, uh, console speed Macaulay uh, governed um, propeller. <coughs> so, um, the, the, the general uh, general section is all put it generally like one engine, it's uh, as I said, a TSEIO one. 550c it's turbocharged uh, takeoff power 310 brake horsepower at 2600 rpm and 35.5 inches of degree climb power is uh, same max cruise speed is 268 brake horsepower at 2550 rpm so um, uh, propeller diameter is 57 inches or 196 centimeters uses 110 uh, 100, uh, 100 ll grade aviation fuel 100 grade aviation fuel so fuel capacity is interesting to know and good and we'll also talk, probably talk about this in limitations too but um it has an 53 gallons in, in each tank so total 106 gallons uh, of that is usable uh, 49 gallons in each tank so 100 and new let's see 98 gallons usable fuel for a trip uh, well, some, some oil capacity and stuff um, certified weight is good as i said 1633 is max gross weight uh, ramp weight takeoff weight is the same 1633 kilos uh, landing weight is 1551 good to remember baggage weight is uh, 54.4 kilos so 120 pounds and if you actually this is good we'll talk a little bit of the weight balance section not a lot because it's not simulated very well but if you go here look there's a baggage section and there's like a area in the back there so you start out by filling up this one uh, and you can fill everything here in up to um 54.4 kilos but if you use this one later you can't fill it up to 54.4 kilos you will have to leave i think like nine Oh, I'll come down. I think it was nine pounds or something. <coughs> I might be switching between like my pounds and my and and kilos. I'll try to stick to kilos, but I sometimes remember wrong. Um, what else? A lot of terminology in the general sections and conversions charts. If you need that, uh, fuel weights. So that's pretty much it. Um. So we might as well, I'm going to do limitations on this one too, because this was kind of short, <laughs> otherwise. Um. So uh, section two is limitations, and um, first is airspeed limitation, we can go inside so we can check out. Uh, the speed tape and that sort of stuff so uh, let's see if we can let's we have a speed tape here but we also have a speed tape here so um if you look at the speeds first maximum operating sp maneuvering speed is uh, on gross weight of 2600 pounds it's 138 knots indicated uh, at flight level 270 which is our maximum flight level it's uh, 96 knots at 3600 pounds like max gross weight we are uh, 162 knots indicated and <coughs> <coughs> sorry i have a little bit of a cold uh, and at 2500 no 20 flight level 250 it's 123 knots indicated we are on limitations page 2-3 in case you're wondering so maximum flight ex Extended speed down for the flap setting um, is 120 knots. This is not actually true in the model in flights and explain. We'll come to that. 
if you extend your platform then we, they will break um, max structural cruising speed is 185 so do not exceed this speed except in smooth air and only with caution so it's good to remember um, at which is at flight level 2 so 250 it's 140 knots uh, never exceed speed 235 never exceed speed at flight level 250 is 178 <coughs> airspeed indications more warn markings so uh, white band band arc is 60 to 117 knots so this one 60 to 117 this is here this is the flak full flap operating range so um, and the lower late limit is the weight stalling speed with the landing configuration so if you have landing flaps this is the uh, lowest you can go and the green band which is let's see somewhere here to here is the normal operating range 73 knots to 181 knots um, lower limit is maximum weight stalling speed with flaps retracted so it's good to remember um, and this is the maximum with like when you unless you have smooth air and only then with caution um, <coughs> the yellow band arc is the uh, is operation must be conducted with caution and only smooth air so this is an air and then above here you can operate with only smooth air and red line is the maximum speed for all operations pretty simple let's see if power plant will say anything about power plant i don't know that's a good thing this one here down here is a vapor suppression vapor suppression system uh, <coughs> and if you check the limitations, which on, on page four, um, it says the vapor suppression rocket switch is required for, to be on above 1800 feet, 18,000 feet, sorry. The vapor suppression rocket switch must be turned on if TIT is rising above 1460 Fahrenheit at full power with maximum with a rich mixture rich f at any altitude. Vapor suppression cam may be turned on below if below 18,000 feet, if power has been reduced below 85% uh, percent and the engine temperatures have stabilized. <coughs> so this is also used when we're gonna switch to tanks. So if we're switching tanks, we'll turn it on and we'll switch tanks and then turn off it when the engine is stable. Power plant in indications, which we do have here. Uh, you can you can get these up if you want to, but I, I do that sometimes for flight planning. We'll do that when we do the normal flight. And tachometer, um, red line, minimum for idle six hundred RPM. It doesn't show it. Here's the tachometer. The maximum is twenty six hundred RPM here. So normal white range is 26 to 6. Uh, white range, sorry. I'm going, sorry, I'm mixing them up. It's slightly odd. To move white range to uh, green range, 20 uh, 2000 to 2500 RPM. So here. And manifold pressure, which is here, uh, 35 to white range that's 33.5 to 35.5 so this I guess there and this is normal over 15 to 33.5 now oil pressure here no PSA here so oil pressure is look at the green range 170 to 220 Fahrenheit or 77 centigrade to 144 centigrade so that's there. there's a red line on both ends I think um, there and the same as the temperature there's a narrow the gap there TIT uh, he doesn't say on the on this here I think in the green so Good to know. Uh, CHT is good to know also when you're going to lean the system later. 
that's pretty much it. Ramp as the ramp weight, as we said, um, 1633 kilos. Um, maximum empty weight is 1228 kilos. The empty one was 11 something. Uh, maximum takeoff weight is 1633 as the max ramp weight. Uh, landing weight is 1551. And that's pretty good to know. <coughs> and we have some limitations on what to do. You can, it's not an uh, acrobatic plane, you can do chandel, chandels, lazy aids, steep turns, and stalls. Uh, uh, entry speed should be 150 knots on all except the stalls. Um, ensure you don't have an imbalance of more than 10 gallons between the left and right side, so these ones. It, this is in gallons, so you'll you know I mean, if the left one is here, you cannot have the right one below that one, so <coughs> or that one. So that's simple to you know, quite simple. Uh, keep track of. You also um, shouldn't exceed ba uh, 60 degrees of bank because that will wear the gy gyros out faster. <coughs> uh, the intentional spinning on the aircraft is prohibited, so that's good to know. Uh, if a spin is entered with flaps extended, they should be retracted after the spin rotation is stopped to avoid ex exceeding the flap speed limit during recovery. If a steady state of spin is rec entered holding the recommended re um, recovery input of power idle rather full against the spin, elevated full forward and aileron full against the spin will produce the fastest recovery. Uh, flight load factory limits, uh, we're on page 8 now of um, limitation sections. Flap up position, flap up cruise position is plus 4.4 g and negative 1.76 g. Down with landing put, um, flaps down uh, 2 plus 2 g and 0 0.0 g minus negative. So it's not mm, keep it easy. Um, the limitations when it comes to pilot requirements: the airplane is has necessary necessary equipment available and certified with daytime and nighttime VFR and IFR operation with only one pilot. So and that's detailed in uh, part 91. If you want to know more about that, uh, flying into known icing is prohibited. That's all about G1000. Also, that has to be set up and maintained. Uh, other limitations, maximum flight altitude is 25,000 feet if a FAA approved oxygen installation and 14,000 feet without that. Uh, flaps may not be extended above altitudes of 14,000 feet. Approved takeoff range is 12%, 12, 12 degrees and approved landing range is 12 and 40 degrees. Um, maximum seating configuration is 4 persons and 1 pilot and 3 passengers. And then we have some placards, which we're not going to look at because I don't think they're... I don't see much placards, actually. So I'm, sure, I'm sure if they're actually in here. Ah, well. So good. Um, and then the next section is the emergency procedures. Well, we'll do that on the next episode. So, I want to thank you for watching. Um, this first episode on the general and limitation sections of the Cessna 400 Corvallis or the Columbia 400, whatever you want to call it. So next time we'll go through the emergency sections a little bit and then we'll go normal and do flight and that sort of stuff. So anyway, thank you for watching and I'm Andy. If you like this channel, please subscribe. If you like this episode, please hit the like button, leave a comment or share and I will see you soon. And as, as I said in the beginning, this is not for real aviation. I'm not a certified flight instructor or pilot. Have a great day everyone. See you soon. Bye bye.